Hey, what is up, Wix Nation? Welcome back to another video here in our WTF What the Funnel series on the Wix Training Academy channel here. My name is Sarah Michaels, and I am your hostess for this series, and we are helping you turn your Wix website into a pretty and profitable lead generation machine. If you have not yet already, by the way, please go ahead, make sure that you click on the subscribe button and the bell so that you get notified when the next video in the series drops, because you do not want to miss it. Because by the end of the series, whether you are starting your Wix website for from complete scratch or whether you already have a website and you want to optimize it for more leads and sales, you are going to walk away from the series knowing exactly what to do to make that happen. All right. Okay. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about the three elements or the three ideas or concepts that you want to make sure you are implementing on your website to be able to have more leads and sales that are, so your website is actually converting. Okay. So whether you are just getting started or whether you are already have a Wix website, this will be beneficial for you. Okay. So the first thing that we talked about in the other videos was, um, making sure that you had a clear path or a clear idea for the path that you want your customers or your ideal market to take once they get to your website, right? So whether they found your site through your marketing or your channel or your content or your SEO, how, however they got to you, once they get to that landing page, what is going to make them actually opt into your list? What's going to make them click that button? What is that next step that you want them to take? So that's why the homework assignment from the very first video in the series was identifying what your FITD, your foot in the door entry level point is in your business or what your offer is. This is often referred to as your lead magnet. Okay. So you have to know what your lead magnet is before we can move on to this next step. So that's the very first thing. You have to have a clear lead magnet. And I want to show you, let's see here. So I wanted to show you an example of a website now, this is a course creator. Her name is Danielle Leslie, and now she's also a coach. She coaches people to help them um, be able to build their own courses from scratch. And I love the template that she uses for her website because it does a really fantastic job of getting the site visitor to actually opt in and actually convert. So I want to show you what that looks like. Okay. So in this instance, you can see on her website that she has an about section. She has testimonials, which is social proof. She has a free guide and then that's it. It's a login for her members. So this is a very, very simple site. Um, she doesn't blog or anything like that. And what she's offering here is a very clear idea of what she wants that site visitor to do next once they get here in order to get them to opt in. So obviously it says, okay, if I could click on this and it would go to her lead magnet, getting me to opt in. Um, I would get a download. She would then invite me to the masterclass and then she would begin sending me emails and I would be able to see if it's a good fit. Yes or no. This is how she's creating a lead generation machine that is converting visitors into her list and then converting them into paying customers without her having to be involved. Okay, so you can see this is the general design of her site, which brings me to point number two. The second thing that you want to make sure that your site has is a very visible call to action, a very visible, a very easy to find call to action. So the call to action on, on this website here looks like this, register now for my free masterclass, okay? And then it says, yes, I'm in. So when I click this link, by the way, this is the page that it takes me to, I would be registering for her masterclass. So this is, by the way, this is the second page. This is the, the we're gonna show you how to design a page like this in the upcoming series. Right now, we're just covering what the specifics are that your site needs. So it has to have a very simple, very clear, very visible 
call to action section. The third thing, the third item on this list that you want to make sure that your site has is a very simple flow. Okay, a very simple flow, meaning we want to remove any of these potential roadblocks that could confuse your potential customer when they get to your website. Okay, because remember, what is the number one conversion killer? Confusion. <laughs> if a site visitor gets to your website and they're confused, or if you don't have a clear opt-in, which means oftentimes if you don't have a clear opt-in, it's because you don't have a clear idea of that first you know, point in your business that you want people to be taking with you. You don't know what your FITD is yet. Okay. So if you don't have a simple flow to your site and there's too much going on, which is one of the number one things I see, by the way, when people work with me, they're like, they come to me and they're like, okay, optimize my site. And it's like, they want to put all of, you know, their background on there. Like, oh, this is all the things that I've done and this, and it's too confusing and overwhelming. And it's more about the design, the person whose website it is. And we have to flip that mindset and be like, okay, this website isn't about you or for you. Like it is, but it isn't. It's for your customer. So when you start thinking of what does the customer need from me, how can I serve them, then your content kind of starts aligning with a very clear focus on the action that you want that person to take on your website. So for example, when you are looking at some of these Wix templates, um, the Wix templates are great because it gives you the bones of, you know, the structure of the overall site, but the websites are not designed to convert people into customers, leads, or sales. They, they just aren't. These are more like digital brochures. So in the second video, I gave you my top five favorite um, lead generation templates on Wix. There are more outside of that. And please don't feel like if you don't have one of these templates that you have to start all over from scratch because you absolutely do not. Um, you can take the tips that we're going to be teaching you and the design elements on what to add and take away you can apply that to any of your Wix site, okay? So for example, on this, on this one right here, we can see that it has a very clear call to action. So if you were um, optimizing or uh, like designing on this site, customizing it, this would be whatever your lead magnet is. So maybe if you are a service provider, it's for a free quote, a free consultation, maybe it's a free download, um, maybe you're giving away some kind of like value-based training or whatever that is, whatever that action that you want that person to take should be very clear and easily visible. Now, the thing that I like about some of these templates here and that you want to make sure that you have is that it is still looking really good on the mobile setting. So when I flip from the desktop to the mobile setting, this is where you can see that this button is still very easily visible. So when somebody lands on my website, that this is this is like landing at the top of the menu. Because remember, 70% of your site visitors are going to be coming on a mobile device. So we want to make sure that not only is this going to look good on a desktop, but it's also going to be efficient if someone's coming to your site from their phone, which chances are they probably will be at some point. Um, and then the other thing about some of the Wix templates is a lot of times on the bottom or on the front page of some of them, it's not a very clear path to your lead magnet. It's not a very clear path to conversion. Okay, so I personally would put my a button up here for my opt-in. I would have that very clear and very visible. I love how this one right here says start your journey because when you click on that, it they use an anchor point and it goes down to that part of her site where she wants you to start, which in her case, it's an inspiration meetup with her. So maybe this is like a one-time entry level, um, you know, a discounted way to work with her. You could also customize this and add uh, like, a free download like we talked about. Um, so that's what you'll see in that section, okay? Uh, the other thing that you want to remove is you want to remove any like 
Well, let me show you. Okay. So for example, on this page, I would take all of the blog posts off the front page. I know I would do that because if someone lands on the front page and all of a sudden they're like clicking around and now they're no longer on my sales funnel. Now they are like, they're going off and reading my blog and they're not going through that whole thing. Okay. Um, so that is why I always like on my front page to have a very clear path of what I want the user to be able to do. And then the footer is where I put my lead magnet. So I always put my footer in the lead magnet because then, no footer, oh my goodness, I had that backwards. <laughs> I always put my lead magnet in the footer, maybe I did say it right, because then even if somebody is on a different page on my website or they are just, you know, maybe they found my website through one of my pieces of content, like my blog, that way, even if they are coming from on something else, they're not landing on that main page, at least they're seeing my opt-in in the footer. Okay, so that's one of the other things that I have. So I have a very clear lead magnet um, that is visible with a very clear call to action. So the way that I do that is I put it in the footer um, and I, I get rid of anything that is cluttering or confusing on that main page. I also, a lot of the times when I go in to um, my website or clients' websites, I make the footer very, very simple. Less is more. Okay, so for example, I just put the bare minimum inside of the footer and I have my lead magnet as the top part of that footer. So that way people are able to opt in. So for example, on this website here, um, this you can see is her lead magnet right here. This would all, this would all be located inside of the footer. Okay, so all of this would be the footer. So that even if somebody lands on her blog post um, or another piece of content, they're going to be able to see this on a desktop or on a mobile device. And they'll be like, oh, okay, I've just finished reading that. There's the footer. Like there's the thing. It's very easy to see at all times. Um, if you are on any of these other templates, I know yesterday we talked about the, let's see here. It was a fitness one. Let's go back and see if we can find that one. I think it was this one. Okay, so underneath of the fitness category, so for example, I liked this one. They have book a trial class now, so that checks it off. You've got a very clear, visible call to action. You're gonna get a trial, right? Which is the foot in the door, that's an FITD. Now, one of the things that I would remove from this particular one is see all of this, there's like way too much going on. So I would take a lot of like some of these things out of here, like this and just, and really consolidate it, make it look a little bit more simple. And then on this section right here, this is where I would have the opt-in. So maybe it's, hey, download our free seven day plan um, for working out. Or maybe this is you know, her trial, whatever that would look like, you want to make sure that that is uh, located on a strip that's easy to see. And we talked about that yesterday. And in the upcoming videos, I'm also going to show you the actual design tactics to be able to create some of these different elements that we're talking about for your lead magnet and your funnel, including, okay, let's do, let's do the, the front page. Let's set up the strip and do the opt-in. Let's design the second page and let's put together some of these automations so that it comes all together into one, which is your lead generation website. So that's what we're going to be going through in the next videos in the WTF What the Funnel series here. So if you have not yet already, please make sure that you go ahead, click the subscribe button and the bell. If you found this helpful, would you please go ahead and give the video a thumbs up? I'd love to hear from you down below in the comments. Um, if you have any questions, if there's anything that you were curious about, if you need help, um, please pop that down in the comments because we're really here. This is an interactive experience and we'd kind of like to help and guide you through that. So thank you so much for being here with us today. I look forward to seeing you in the next videos. Bye. Bye.